Welcome to Analytical Chemistry Vision, a platform dedicated to exploring the theoretical and experimental aspects of chemistry, blending classroom learning with laboratory research to enhance understanding and inspire innovation in chemical science. This lecture on Error in Chemical Analysis help the UG, PG, and research students to the concepts of systematic and random errors, their causes, classification, minimization, and statistical representation through normal distribution. The session enhances conceptual understanding, data accuracy, and analytical precision, fostering critical thinking and reliable interpretation in chemical measurements and research. In this second part of the analytical chemistry, errors section consists of definition of error, classification of error, systematic error, random error, and how the random error can be presented in the form of normal distribution curve. Welcome to this interesting and highly useful topic, error in chemical analysis. In analytical chemistry, error refers to the difference between the measured value and the true value of a quantity. It tells us how much our observed result deviates from the actual one. Mathematically, it's expressed as, error equals measured value minus true value. Errors can arise from many sources, limitations in instruments, environmental factors, personal mistakes, or imperfections in experimental methods. They can be positive, when the measured value is higher than the true value, or negative, when it's lower. Understanding errors is the first step toward achieving accurate and reliable analytical results. Now, let's look at the classification of errors in chemical analysis. Errors can be broadly classified into systematic or determinate errors, and random or indeterminate errors. Systematic errors are consistent and reproducible, they can be identified and corrected. These are further divided into instrumental errors, personal errors, method errors. The nature of these four types of systematic errors can be either additive or proportional in nature. We'll discuss each of these error types in detail later on. Now, let's understand the concept of systematic or determinate errors in chemical analysis. Systematic errors are those whose magnitude can be measured once the definite cause is identified. They produce consistent deviations in one direction, either higher or lower than the true value. Because their source is known, such as instrument miscalibration, procedural flaws, or human mistakes, they can often be measured corrected, or minimized. Systematic errors are mainly classified into three types. First is, instrumental errors, second one is personal errors, and third one is method errors. First, let's discuss instrumental or apparatus error, which comes under systematic error. Instrumental error is a type of determinate error that occurs due to imperfections, faulty calibration, or malfunctioning of analytical instruments, leading to consistent deviations in measurement results. For examples, incorrect calibration of a pH meter giving wrong readings, incorrect calibration of an analytical balance giving wrong mass readings, a burette with an air bubble in the tip causing volume error, drift in potentiometer readings due to faulty electrodes, aging or worn out glassware affecting accuracy of volume measurements. Thus, proper calibration and maintenance of instruments help minimize such errors. Second type of systematic error is personal error. Personal error is a type of determinate error that arises from the carelessness, bias, or limitations of the analyst during measurement, such as incorrect reading, timing, or recording of data. Let's look at some examples. First one is reading a burette or scale from an incorrect angle. Second one is loss in bumping of uncovered solution while heating, failure to remove precipitate quantitatively from vessels. Third one is improper adjustment of instruments, such as wavelength, current, or temperature. Fourth one is failure to follow procedures, such as shaking, heating, or digesting samples properly. Thus, such errors can be minimized through careful observation, training, and strict adherence to experimental protocols. Third type is method error. Method error is a type of systematic, determinate, error arising from limitations or imperfections in the analytical procedure, such as incomplete reactions or unsuitable reagents, affecting the accuracy of measurement results. First one is, incomplete precipitation of barium sulfate leads to lower measured values of barium in a sample. Second one is, for trace iron in water, gravimetric methods are inaccurate, a sensitive technique like spectrophotometry should be used to ensure precise and reliable measurement. Third one is, improper mobile phase selection in HPLC causes poor separation, resulting in incorrect quantification of components. 
Minimization method errors are minimized by validation, standard references, optimized conditions, contamination control, and proper procedures. Let us see the second type of error, called as a random error or indeterminate error. Random error is an unpredictable, indeterminate error in measurements caused by uncontrollable factors like environmental fluctuations or instrument noise, affecting precision but averaging out over multiple observations. Examples minor variations in voltmeter or spectrophotometer readings occur due to electronic noise or unstable power supply. Small, uncontrollable changes in laboratory temperature cause slight differences in reaction rates or solution volumes during repeated measurements. Drifts or vibrations slightly disturb balances or sensitive instruments, causing small, irregular deviations in measured values. Minimization This error can be minimized by taking repeated measurements, averaging results, using precise instruments, and maintaining consistent experimental conditions. Finally, let's understand the normal distribution of random or indeterminate errors. The normal distribution of indeterminate, random, errors describes how random errors in measurements are statistically spread around the true value. These errors are unpredictable and arise from uncontrollable factors, such as slight fluctuations in instruments, environmental conditions, or human handling. Probability About 68% of values lie within plus minus 1 sigma, where sigma is standard deviation, 95% within plus minus 2 sigma. 99.7% within plus minus 3 sigma. Shown in the image. Now, let's discuss the important points of the normal distribution curve. The bell-shaped curve represents random errors following a Gaussian or normal distribution, which is symmetric around the mean or true value. Key characteristics include, most measurements cluster near the mean. Fewer measurements lie far from the mean. The mean, median, and mode are equal. Standard deviation, sigma, sigma, measures the spread or precision of the measurements. Understanding this distribution helps assess the reliability and variability of analytical results. Next, let's discuss additive error, a type of systematic error. A type of systematic error that remains constant regardless of the measurement magnitude. Examples, a balance consistently reads 0.05 grams too high for all samples. A puppet always delivers 0.1 mL more than its marked volume. A thermometer reads 0.5 degrees Celsius higher than the actual temperature. A volumetric flask consistently overfills by 0.2 mL. These errors can be identified and corrected to improve measurement accuracy. Now, let's learn about proportional error, another type of systematic or determinate error. Proportional error is a type of systematic, determinate, error that varies in proportion to the measured quantity, causing larger deviations as the magnitude of the measurement increases. Examples Inducers A burette delivers 1% more volume than intended, so larger volumes have larger errors. A spectrophotometer reading is 2% higher than the true absorbance, increasing with concentration. A voltmeter gives readings 1% higher for higher voltages. A scale stretches under heavier loads, giving 2% excess weight for large samples. A titration method overestimates analyte concentration by 1%, proportional to the amount titrated. Proportional errors can be corrected by calibration and careful procedure design. Let us see what are questions that can be raised on this topic we learned here. The questions are first one, what are the two main types of errors in chemical analysis? Second, explain the difference between systematic, determinate, error and random, indeterminate, error. Third, what are additive and proportional errors? Fourth, what causes instrumental errors in measurements? Fifth, give three examples of instrumental errors. Sixth, how can instrumental errors be minimized? Seventh, what is a personal error in chemical analysis? Eighth, list at least three examples of personal errors in the laboratory. Ninant, how can personal errors be minimized? 10th Define method error and explain its impact on measurements. 11th Give examples where method errors can occur in analytical procedures. 12th How can method errors be minimized? 13th What is a random error and how does it affect measurements? Please see more addition questions on type of errors. Thus, in summary for learning this topic provides a strong foundation in analytical chemistry by helping students understand the sources, types, and control of errors in measurements. 
it enhances critical thinking, improves data reliability, and builds confidence in interpreting experimental results, which is essential for conducting accurate, precise, and reproducible scientific analyses. Thank you for watching the analytical chemistry vision. Next part of analytical chemistry, part 3, we will learn the use of statistics in chemical analyses such mean, median, average deviation, standard deviation, relative standard deviation, test of significance, F test, student T test. If you not seen part 1, please see to understand what is qualitative and quantitative analysis, classification of analytical methods, and what factors that affect the chemical measurement in laboratory. If you like this video, please visit our channel for more interesting theoretical and experimental lectures. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and share your feedback in the comments to help us improve further. Thank you.